Good everyone, my name is Graphics. Today we want to look at another aspect of electrical engineering science, which is termed electromagnetism. Now, electromagnetism, just like the name implies, is the interaction between electricity and magnetism, right? From our previous videos, we've done what is called an electric circuit. You know, an electric circuit comprises of what? The movement of electrons. While in a magnetic circuit, we have what is called the flow of what? Of flux, right? We call it magnetic lines of force or lines of force. Now, the difference there is just in an electric circuit, the electron can be splitted into negative and positive charge. Why in the magnetic circuit it has two poles and these poles can never be splitted, which is called the north pole and what the south pole this way. Right? They can never be splitted no matter how you split this magnet, the north and the south will always be together. They like the north and south always form a closed loop. That means the lines, magnetic lines, will always move from the north pole to the south pole, irrespective of how you break this as much into tiny particles. You always have the north and the south pole. So now, what is this electromagnetism? I said it is the interaction between an electric field and what a magnetic field as to when a charging electric field is used to produce a magnetic field or a charging magnetic field is used to produce an electric field and when you see an electric field you see it has like your coil because we know when current passes through a conductor as it passes through the conductor, there is a field that is being created around the conductor, right? And also, we will be looking at um, the terminologies used in electromagnetism. So let's start. The first terminology we're talking about will be our magnetic flux. When you say terminology, we talk about the terms used. So the first one will be magnetic flux the magnetic flux this is the number of lines of force in the circuit the number of what lines of force in a circuit and it is measured in Weber right now it is represented using the symbol flux as in this symbol here Call it the file, the file, of, and so on. Now, when you talk about magnetic lines of force, we're talking about this what makes up the field, right? I said when you have a magnet, around the magnet, we have what is called the magnetic field, to which, when you bring a material that has magnetic property closer. When you get into this field, where the lines of force, um, mag magnetic line of force covers, you get attracted. And we say it is measured in Weber. Now, oh, number two, we're talking about magnetic flux density. The magnetic flux density is the amount of magnetic flux in an area taken perpendicular to the magnetic flux direction. And um, it is measured in Weber per meter square or Tesla. Also, it is represented using the symbol B. Right? So, mathematically, mathematically, we say that our magnetic flux B is equal to what the flux over what the area 
we know our flux is in Weber. Our area is in meter square. So we see it's measured in what? Weber per watt meter square or in Teslas. Tesla. T S E L A. It's a capital letter T. That is for it. Now let's take an example and see how we can use this terminology. Example one. Now this is the question and says that a magnet produces a flux of 180 micro Weber through a rectangular region of width 30 millimeter and height 40 millimeter measured as right angle to the field. Find the magnetic flux density. So what you do in this case here is that you write out your parameters. Now the given data, the data given is that the flux, which we say the symbol is this, is given to be 180 micro Weber, right? And 180 multiplied by this micro means 10 to the power of what minus 6 to have Weber here. That is the first parameter. Now the other parameter is we are given the width W of what 30 millimeter. Now you convert it to meter to, to give us 30 over 1000 and that will give us 0 0.03 meter. And the next one we have here is the height, right? The height which is giving us 40 millimeter. Now, if you convert it, divide by 1000, you have 0 0.04 meter. And we are told that since it is a rectangular region, rectangular region, right? Since it is a what? A rectangular region. Therefore, my area will given as what? The height times what? The width or the width times the height. And that will be giving us um, 0 0.04 multiplied by 0 0.03. So the answer will be having to be my area will be 0 0.0012 meter square. That is for the area. And we are told to say we should find the magnetic flux density. And our magnetic flux density B is what we are looking for. So we know that B is unknown. Right? So these are the parameters. So from here, we we'll say recall. Recall. B is equal to what? Flux over area. And what is the flux given? The flux given here is given to be um, 180 times 10 to the power minus 6. 180 times 10 to the power minus 6. All over the area is what? 0 0.0012. So my B flux density will now give me 1 point. Sorry, I mean 0. Point 0 0.15 teslas I can you divide this by this to give you 0 0.15 teslas the next terminology we're talking about will be magnetomotive force that what we're talking about magnetomotive force so the magnetomotive force is just analogous to the electromotive force in a magnetic circuit. We know that in an in a electric circuit, the EMF helps to um, increase the flow of electron, right? Why in the magnetic circuit, the magnetic motive force tends to increase the creation of what of flux. So magnetic motive force increases what 
the creation of flux in a magnetic circuit, right? And also, we can say that um, our magnetic force is always measured in ampere ton. So let's see. So we say it is the phenomenon that gives rise to what magnetic field, right? Now and increases the creation of what of flux in a magnetic circuit. That is, we can say in a magnetic circuit, the magnetic flux is due to the existence of the magnetomotive force. So and it is represented using the symbol. You can call it MMF magnetomotive force or you can write it this way depending on what you understand so we say mathematically my MMF MMF magnetomotive force is equal to what my current times the number of ton now in terms of a solenoid we have a material or a metal and if I wrap a conductor around the metal this way now I, will, I connect it to a source, probably a battery. Now, if I pass this is positive, this is negative. If I pass a current I through this ton, you see this there is loop there is coily, so it's called N. So that is the ton. So we say that the MMF is proportional to what the N. So the more the number of ton, the more the if the magnetic force will increase, right? So we're having a kind of force field around it, kind of force field around it. So the bigger the supply, the bigger the tons, the more the current that flows. As long as the current is constant. So from here. This is our mathematical term, MMF equals to what I N. The N is the number of ton and the I is the current. So let's take an illustration. It's a calculation. Now, the question is, find the magnetic force produced by a coil of 400 tons if the current flowing through the coil is 25 milliampere. Now, the first thing you do, you write your data. We have the number of ton N to be 400 and the current flowing through I is equal to what? 25 milliampere, which is interesting 25 multiplied by 10 raised by what? Minus 3 ampere, which is interesting as saying um, 0, 0.0. 2, 5 ampere and over 3. So we're not going to look for what the MMF find, right? The magnetic force. So we're looking for this here. So you're going to write recall. Recall MMF is equal to what the current multiplied by the number of ton. And what is the current given? 0 0.025 multiplied by the number of ton is what? 400. So if you multiply these two, you're going to be having 10 ampere ton. So 10 ampere ton. So now we we'll move forward to the next terminology, which is magnetic field strength that is the next terminology now it is either you call it the magnetic field strength or you call it magnetic field intensity and this can be defined as uh, the ratio of the magnetomotive force 
which is required to create a certain flux density within a certain material per unit length, right? So, now, per unit length, right? And it is represented using the symbol capital letter H, right? And the unit for it is given as what? Ampere per meter. So it's measured in what? Ampere per meter. So mathematically, we say that our magnetic field strength is equals to what? Our magnetomotive force all over what? The length. But we know that our MMF is equal to what? Current times number of tons all over the length. So let's analyze this and see how we can apply that in this equation. Example 3. So it says, example 3, a coil of 200 tons is wound uniformly over a wooden ring having a main circumference of 600 mm and uniform cross-section area of 500 mm square. If the current through the coil is 4 amp, find the magnetic field strength. Now, the first thing you do is to write out your parameters. So the data given, the data given, we have the number of ton N to be equals to 200 tons. And um, the mean circumference, which is saying the length, the same thing as saying the mean circumference, and that is giving us 600 millimeter and uniform cross section area of 500 millimeter square. So my area is given as what? 500 millimeter square. Now I'll convert this millimeter into meter. So 600 divided by 1000 is 0 0.6 and 500 millimeter squared is divided by well, when you have 500 millimeter it's also giving us 500 multiplied by 10 is power what? minus 3 right and because of the square we are going to put the square here which is make power what? 2 we have meter square right because this 600 millimeter is saying 600 times 10 is power what? minus 3 so if you divide this you'll be having this so in this case this will now give me 500 multiplied by 10 is power what? minus 6 because 2 times 3 is what? minus 6 meter so it means I can write it as saying my 500 divided by what? 1 million so if you divide 500 by 1 million we are going to be having 0 0.0005 meter square that is our area now from here says if the current through the coil is 4 ampere so my current I is equal to what? 4A so you should look for what? the magnetic field strength so we are looking for H our age hour we're looking for. So what you do here is recall. Recall H is equal to what? I N all over what? L. If you put your value here, this will give us what is the I? The I is four. The N is 200 and the L is 0 0.6 now if you multiply that you are going to be having to give us 1333.33 so you are going to put ampere per meter that is the unit that's how we calculate for our magnetic field strength now the next parameter we'll be looking at will be what reluctance or you call it magnetic resistance. Now the reluctance or the magnetic resistance is analogous to resistance in an electric circuit. But in an electric circuit the resistance helps to what to reduce the rate at which electron flow in such a way that what 
heat is being what dissipated now but in times of magnetic resistance or reluctance it helps the what it is it helps the what reduce the what the creation of magnetic flux in a circuit magnetic circuit right but the reluctance on its own helps to what it helps to stores energy in in form of what magnetism that is just the difference so it helps to reduce the creation of flux in a magnetic circuit now it is measured its unit is in airy inverse h is power what minus one or you say a t all over what weber or you say a all over what weber that is area any of us three mathematically my reluctance is giving us length all over what permeability times area now our permeability can either be absolute permeability or permeability due to free space this absolute permeability absolute permeability which is giving us uh, 4 pi times 10 power minus 7 ampere per meter or we have the UR which given as what relative permeability right so your U can be any of these two now if I want to now rewrite this I can write this to be R is equal to the length all over what U naught U R A depending on what parameter is given also I can say that my arrow can also be given as what um, MMF all over what the flux so you can use either this depending on the parameter that is given or you can use any of this we know MMF is what I end over flux or you can say arrow is equal to what I n all over what flux so they are the same so let's take a um, an example to showcase this first thing you do it says example calculate the reluctance for a magnetic circuit where the magnetomotive force is 8.9 ampere ton and the magnetic flux is 0.24 Weber so first thing you have to do you write your data we have two parameters here we say that our MMF is equal to what 8.9 ampere ton and our magnetic flux is equal to what um, 0.24 Weber right so from here what you do is recall we're looking for what the reluctance so recall since this parameter is given we say that my reluctance will be MMF all over what the flux so what is our MMF MMF is 8.9 and what is our flux and that is what 0 0.24 so this will now give us 37.0880 over wb so that will be our answer so we'll go to the next terminology which will be now the next terminology we'll be using will be permanence so the permanence is the inverse of reluctance balance is the inverse of what reluctance and uh, we choose this symbol like this to represent our permanence right so we see our p our we'll call it rho is equals to one over what r so inverse of reluctance and since reluctance is given as Henry inverse so Palmer's begin as what Henry so the next thing we we'll are talking about will be permeability permeability the permeability 
is the measure of the ability of a material to support the formation of magnetic field within itself. Permeability. Permeability. Is the ability of material to what? Allow the formation of magnets within itself. And we say we have different kind of permeability. We have what is called the relative permeability. We have the absolute permeability. So the, the absolute permeability has a constant of 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 ampere per meter. So, and also, so we say that my permeability is equals to absolute permeability multiplied by relative permeability. Where this guy here is given as 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 ampere per meter that is for absolute permeability is a constant so now we should also know that our magnetic field magnetic flux density b this man here is also equal to what b is equal to our permeability times what our magnetic field strength don't forget this so whenever you are given a relative permeability, you can easily say that my B is equal to what? U naught U R H. So any of these two depending on what is what, what is given. And um, now if you notice something with what we've done so far, you can recall that at the beginning we said our magnetic field strength is given as what mmf over the length right so i can write this to be that my h is equals to what mmf all over what length so if i make my mmf sorry the formula my mmf will now be equal to what? HL right? so this is equation 1 also I say that my MMF is equal to what? current times number of ton that is what? equation 2 also I said my reluctance reluctance is equal to what? MMF divided by what? Uh, my flux. So if I make um, the MMS formula, my MMF will now be equal to what? My flux times reluctance. So this will give me this MMF here. So this will give my equation what? Equation 3. So with what you've seen here now, it means that my MMF is equals to hl is equals to in is equals to the flux times the reluctance so any of these three is just the relationship between the three of them is applicable sometimes you might be given some certain things that you need to work with so the hl the magnetic field strength times length is equals to the current times number of tons is equals to what the flux times reluctance. So just know that HL is equals to IN is equals to what? Is equals to flux times reluctance. Thanks very much for watching. If this video has been helpful to you, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. My next video will solve miscellaneous problems on electrical magnetic circuits. Thank you very much.